welcome back everybody. Welcome to Bish's RV. If it's your first time here, we're in Coldwater, Michigan at my hometown store today. You can see it over my left shoulder. And that right there over my right shoulder is the J Feather 27 BHB. And let's dive into this thing and take a look at it with our little Bish's RV floor plan in a flash, as I like to call it. Uh, this is a, uh, well, they're Asdell now, by the way. That's something that clicked over last year. Not a lot of people realize. J Feathers, all of them, not just the micros, are all now double Asdell walls. So is Big Brother Whitehawk, by the way. Um, the uh, model here is something that should generally be half ton towable for a common tow package half ton. There might be some lighter duty half tons that may not quite be up to the task, so always double check your tow capacities on an individual vehicle basis. Um, it's a great extended season model with a heated enclosed belly, not all, fully all the way four seasons, and giving you that fair good and bad info, that's what we're going to do here for you today. Like we've got turn signal safety lighting, Goodyear endurance radials, factory TPMS on these that very few brands in this class are Offering. Although I'm going to give Rockwood credit, they were doing it first and longest. Uh, we're looking at one today up on that uh, plywood decked walkable roof uh, rated for snow loads. We've got a factory solar package. It is a carpetless uh, floor flush slide where that is really nice is in the dining area. God forbid the uh, kids spill something. It's a lot easier to clean up on that vinyl, that linoleum, whatever you want to call it. Uh, best in class bunk ratings, best in class warranty, best in class a lot of things going in on this one. That's one of the things. These are rarely the lightest weight. Um, or the, the least expensive in their class, but you could argue they're some of the most heavily equipped. There's a couple areas though that might be some instant deal breakers and points of concern for folks. I'm gonna share that as we go. And I would ask you, tell me what you like, tell me what you dislike, and what would you change given the opportunity? I guess that would be basically what you dislike, isn't it? I don't know. Hit subscribe if you appreciate that I'm trying to be fair. <laughs> Now, where a lot of Jayco's are extra large or like, you know, they're super tall or they're wider or something like that, the J Feathers are a more conventionally sized camper. Um, and that brings its own set of benefits and drawbacks. And one of the things that I, I feel very strongly about is that every RV, every feature, every person's greatest assets are also their greatest liabilities and vice versa. So being a little bit smaller sometimes means that, you know, we're now more towable, we're less expensive. Although I, I won't ever say any Jayco is ever the least expensive camper in its class. That's almost never the case. But what are we looking at here? Good with the bad. Let's get one thing out of the way real quick. It's got a lot of windows. They're over on the driver's side though. It's just the nature of the beast with a floor plan this size if you wanna smash a full super slide into it. You might notice though, that is absolutely my nerd preferred way of doing the flooring. A carpetless floor flush slide where the, uh, the, the main floor vinyl basically persists all the way in. And we're getting a look at the um, vintage uh, decor today. I just call it vintage because I think it's technically called like vintage washed gray, but that still reads a little more of a sandy taupe than a gray to me. Am I am I wrong? Is that more of a grayish? I, I, I don't know, I don't know. Where I'm gonna give them serious credit, maybe the tune of they, they could even dial it back a bit. The number of lights they pack into this thing is extreme. I mean, to the extreme, they rock the mic like a vandal. They light up the stage like a chump, like a candle. Look at that thing. Look at that thing. Somebody leave me a hashtag with the musical reference. I was just dropping over there. Anyway, you can tell I grew up uh, the 90s in a small little Midwestern town. Regardless, you have your choice between the farmhouse decor or this uh, vintage decor. You also have a choice between the uh, conventional jackknife storage sofa, although I do like how they put the simulated cinema seat armrest in there, um, you also, uh, or a theater seat or a hide -a bed So that one right there kind of gives us a little bit of theater seat, kind of gives us a, a, a small fold down sleeper. We'll see that in a minute, but it obviously also adds some storage to this thing. Um, I'd be kind of curious to know which um, seating setup would you kind of prefer in this thing, my two cents? I think that this RV being a bunkhouse has enough sleeping. I'd probably either leave it the standard sofa or go to a theater seat, especially considering the, the you know direct boardwalk and park place viewing angle that you have right there across from the sofa. That is as easy uh, going as it gets, no neck wrecking. Now, an interesting thing here, here in the biggest room of these J Feathers, they use one of those big XL, uh, people call them like Max Air vent fans. Whether it's the Max Air brand or not, that's what a lot of people call them, the big fan. Um, in the bathroom, they use a smaller fan. In the bedroom, they also have another smaller fan. So each room has its own fans to handle its own airflow. The small fans could obviously be uh, upgraded. By the way, somebody came in today. They said, man, Josh, I'm like your biggest fan. And I said, how tall are you? They said, well, I'm 5'2". And I said, well, <laughs> sorry, you're not my biggest fan. <laughs> 
that's just the kind of stuff that keeps me uh, going. Now, you might notice the little cargo hooks down there. We're going to come back and see this thing in its folded up cargo bunk mode in just a minute. I do want to point out, though, one of the cool things we're looking here with that open air ladder wall, it makes the RV look and feel big. And that's actually one of the reasons I really like this floor plan. Because this is one of those models, it doesn't feel like, let's say the kids grow up and they stop camping with you. The bunks don't really feel like they're really heavily imposing on the floor plan. You don't feel like you gave up eight foot of your camper just for some bunk space that now probably isn't being used a whole heck of a lot. This is a model that could work well, frankly, I think as just a couple's model, you can repurpose that as some storage, especially with the pseudo cargo bunk function, although it doesn't have a rear door. We'll talk more about that in a minute. But this is a camper, like, if you are trying to find your second camper the first time, and, like, after the kids grow up, you're not sure how long you're going to be camping, this type of layout is a fantastic option for you. My two cents. And you're more than two cents in the equation, certainly. <laughs> And by the way, speaking of like future proofing, one of the nice things here, uh, the uh, air conditioner they're using on these, you don't have to worry about upgrading it. It already comes with the big air, basically, a 15,000 BTU air unit. Last year, that was a 14,500 like oddball size. Usually uh, they're either like a 13.5 or a 15. That's just a straight 15 now. This is really nice though. Both bunks get household and USB plugs and get those handy little uh, net, like phone pocket nets right there. That is a handy detail. Um, down over this direction, baby, she fluffy friendly. That that thing, it can, if, if, if you are thick with two C's, you are going to fit very nicely on that. However, if you are tall with two L's, which is the traditional way of spelling it, you're gonna have to have your head up in the bubble bubble uh, toil and trouble kind of skylight situation like you saw me there. Thankfully, they do position that right in front of the shower head, which makes uh, the most sense. Um, actually, I wanna give you a little bit better look the other direction here. Because although it isn't big, I do like that they give us an actual medicine cabinet with a mirror, and that is a nicely sized sink where uh, if you actually gotta get adult size hands in there, you can make them fit pretty darn well. Um, the uh, little kind of drunken octopus fight club over here acting as a little bit of towel hangers for us. Maybe a little toilet paper shelf or you could roll up some towels to keep them in there. And if you do need just a moment of privacy and personal parental sanity, you do have a locking bathroom door, which is a nice little touch on these. Although remember, you also have a deadbolt locking um, primary uh, like, you know, outside entry door straight to that bathroom. By the way, if you're looking at this model and you're like, what in the world? Like if you've never looked at campers before and you're like, why is there a door straight to the toilet? That is weird, right? Well, in the world of camping, sometimes it's really nice with kids to be able to get them in the bathroom fast, especially in those potty training years. I think any parent has had that situation where you're like, listen, old lady, I will knock you down. If you don't get out of the way, my way, my kid, you do not break the cycle. We are potty training right now. And right now there's a lot of parents going, uh-huh, yep, that's true. Not to mention the fact that it just cuts down on so much dirt getting tracked through your camper. So I think we've mostly seen everything. Remember, again, we're looking at the uh, vintage decor. Anything we're looking at in that sandy tote brown, whatever you want to call it right there, could be basically white with some little uh, distressed accents or whatever you want to call it. Opening everything up, that, by the way, is either a huge pantry or a coat closet. Those shelves are removable. Um, looking over here, you can see how, again, that dinette can fold down. The sofa can fold down, but there's some different sofa swaptions. And you might notice how they've also updated to the blackout roller shades, which is kind of cool. I actually think the camper that I'm recording, I think those shades were installed backwards. The lighter side is, I believe, supposed to face outwards so that it helps reflect the sun, not the black side absorb the sun. You may notice behind that 4K smart TV that they have now, um, there is some uh, storage back there. Uh, that's kind of like a, I like to call that little pantry tainment center. So you actually have, in a sense, two pantries. You sort of have your choice between saying, do I want the TV to be a pantry or do I uh, want the coat closet to be a pantry? You can, I don't know, maybe mix and match and merge the two a little bit, whatever works for you. Jay Feathers, by the way, they uh, avoid floor heat vents wherever they have the opportunity. Sometimes, though, there's certain floor plans. Like, I actually think in the bedroom here of this one, there might happen to be one up there. But one of the other things I like about this, it makes it look and feel so big, is that extra wide sliding like barn farmhouse style door into your private be uh, bedroom space. I like the breeze across windows. There's good things going on in here. Um, as we continue to whap, uh, whap, 
nope that's a that's a different thing according to cardi b uh wrap our way uh around here w r a p there we are you see the solar controller sitting over there by the uh tv hookups and once again like i said um the uh every single ceiling vent in this does have a powered vent fan living room biggest room has the biggest fan the two smallest rooms have the smallest fans and again you can always upgrade those uh you know a little bit as you see fit now uh taking a look over here looking inside that there's they give you the option of that being hanging closet space or wardrobe space and they have uh, household and uh, USB outlets on the front and additional household outlets behind in that little headboard pocket right there, which is really awful handy. Now, you might have noticed underneath the bed over here, there is some easy lift storage, which is very cool. But there's like this middle extra storage pocket. And you're like, why did they do that? Well, I think somebody's been taking a little bit of a note out of the uh, the Coachman underbed storage uh, plan. And what they did here is they've added drawers to both sides of this. So you actually have at least one dresser drawer and potential for hanging space and that extra overhead space on either side of the bedroom. I think that was a simple and smart update that a lot of people are gonna overlook and that's a good one. And I figured one of the best ways to really demonstrate how functional this one is in transit is to start all the way up here, still in the bedroom, and weave our way all the way to the back without ever having to use both entry doors. You can pick one door and walk all the way through the camper because right here, um, they allow you to do a little slip slide travel trailer two-step maneuver and, and get your way through this thing. Kind of reminds me, you remember that old commercial? It's like, you run! You slide, you hit the bump, and take a dive. I don't know why. That commercial just came into my head right now. And this right here, this is interesting to me, because like you can get to the bunks, and it's got that cool cargo bunk function. I like that they gave us the tie-down to keep the cargo in place, but it doesn't have a rear access door, nor do I think it can, because I believe there's some kind of plumbing or something running through that area that uh, prevents the inclusion of that feature. But front door... Back door, doesn't matter. All I'm going to say is that if I'm sitting here on the toilet, I am going to be able to keep an eye on my campsite. And actually on that note, joking aside, what do you think about this window in the bathroom? Like I say all the time how I think a window in a bathroom kind of churches the place up, you know, it makes it look kind of grander and cooler, but there's something about the window staring straight at the toilet that is just off-putting to me. Now I could put a shade in here and leave it drawn all the time, but then what's the point of the window? Um, I don't know. What is the right thing to do here? Window? No window? Frosty glass? Give me a shade? No window? Like, what's the right call? And before we get started, I realize there's a quick little housekeeping note I need to offer you here. Evidently, this specific RV was manufactured pre-September 2022. What that means is that the updated quick drop stabilizer jacks with basically the built in, um, almost like JT strong arm are not yet applied to this specific camper. However, uh, for the obviously mass majority, uh, uh, mass majority, vast majority. I said that, didn't I? I wanna roll the camera back on that one. I, I think I said mass majority. Anyway, you get the idea. I'm a vajidiot. <laughs> Ooh, all right. Anyway, what I'm getting at is you will see superior stabilization standard after September of 2022 on J Feathers, J Flights, and White Hawks. Now, uh, up front here, a couple interesting things. Notice the, uh, they've changed up the chassis a little bit. These were running on a Bell Norco chassis. They have flipped over to a uh, LCI, more traditional I-beam frame chassis. Um, that's probably due to the fact that those different stabilizer jacks that I was telling you about effectively come from the same supplier. So they're all kind of part of the same package. I highly suspect, oh my good Lord, I'm tripping over some stable steps beside me. Um, anyway, sorry, there's a Wildwood over here trying to kill me. Evidently Forest River sabotaging my Jayco footage today. Shame on them. Our sidewalls are now double Asdell. So the layer below the fiberglass and the layer below the interior wallboard um, both Asdell. So there's basically the walls are all aluminum and composite. Notice how big this is. This is one of the 23 updates right here. It used to be the bed sat a little bit lower. So now 
Um, basically what they did is they raised the bed up a little bit on the inside, but that massively increased the size of the outside storage. Now, one of the cool things with this magnet holdback, you can go Miss Piggy, and it just drops right down for you, which is very cool. You see that it does have that magnet holdback, obviously, protected hinge, and a key alike system. So you'll have one key that does your entry door, deadbolt, and uh, all of your baggage doors. Also, if you flip on your right-hand turn signal, all of the lights like this on the side of the RV will blink with your signals, and that is a side view camera mount. So you can get a full observation suite on this if you are so inclined, and I better be careful that Wildwood doesn't attack me again. You gotta watch out for those crazy things. I will kung fu chop you in the face, Wildwood. Anyway, with karate, I'll, well, never mind. There's a song and I can't repeat the rest of it if I don't want an HR incident. Uh, Anti-slam entry door, and that main door is very important due to the fact that that door could open and overlap with the awning arm. And if you smack one of those awning arms and they go sideways, they done, son. But uh, otherwise, they generally hold up pretty darn well. They're made to go straight forward in and out. Sideways, you'll crimp them, they're toast. Uh, stable step standard up front here. I think years ago that was optional. It's since become standard. And uh, I, I want your input. I don't want to say how I feel about this. I would like your like unfiltered input without me mucking it up. What we have over here, this is the, the J port. It's like a little mounting system and it comes with a griddle that comes with the camper. Very cool. There's a gas grill quick connect by it. The rest of what we're going to call the camp kitchen or whatever you want to call it, it doesn't have any sort of sink or water fixture, but instead we actually do have a nice drawer, which is always useful. Not to mention on the inside here, you have some power outlets, household, USB, and the Barley Poppinator 37,000 series, uh, you know, with the, the Jayco emblazoned bird over there. And that's all galvanized rolled steel. It is kind of split up. It is basically dead under the middle of the awning, which is cool for rainy day use. Um, it also means that there's potentially a very hot object and fixture right in the middle of your campsite, frankly, not too far from the door. Obviously, I, I tried not to inject my own opinion, but obviously that concerns me. And I'd be curious, am I just being overly dad paranoid or is there something legitimate about what I'm saying there? Goodyear Endurance Radials. More and more brands are going to them. Jayco's been doing them longer and stronger. And now factory TPMS that integrates with their uh, BM Pro control system. Uh, notice how that awning actually does clear the rear bathroom door, which is really nice. Um, that, by the way, uh, remember, you can deadbolt that. So there might be a window in the door, but thankfully, uh, for the most part, it's, it's shaded pretty hard. It's tinted. It's hard to see inside. I will tell you again, though, being fair, good with the bad. At night, if it's dark outside, and it is lit inside that bathroom. And I don't mean like, whoa, it's lit 100. I mean like when it is illuminated on the inside, they gonna see you naked butt. So even if you're just, you know, pinning a washcloth um, over that window, something for privacy is probably something people are going to uh, like and appreciate and prefer. Um, working our way around here, one of the nice things, this is a single stinky slinky sewer outlet and blah, 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 look what they're doing here. I can't talk obviously. So your actual primary pole gate valves and everything are inside the underbelly. This right here is just an extra cross flow valve so that your kitchen gray tank also exhausts over here. So for the most part, most of your blade valves are enclosed in the heated underbelly. That one is not. Now. Um, that is a, uh, you know, if you're trying to do a, a good cold weather camping scenario, that might be a problematic thing for you. That's why I point this stuff out so you can better understand what you're looking at. And I'm, I might be drunk at work again. It's been a while, but I do believe, um, one of the things there is that, uh, I think I could shove myself in that compartment under the bunk. I think I could fit. Anyway. Looking up top here, you can see that this one's outfitted with the Overlander One solar package. That is a 200 watt con, uh, panel with a 30 amp controller. I also need to do another bit of housekeeping. I, I, I was told that one of our 27 J feathers suffered some on the lot damage and this is our fault, something that we are getting fixed and repaired. Somebody did a little tail swing maneuver and bumped this. So uh, understand folks, even trained professionals who do this every day occasionally still have an oops. It's just a thing that can happen. And the more you move stuff around, the more likely it is to eventually occur. If I see something, I say something. I'm not gonna gloss over it. I'm not gonna lie about it. I'm gonna tell you what is, I'm gonna be real with you. And hey, sometimes we're not flawless guys, but you know, uh, I, I think that's just human nature and that's the way of things. And I think we can all just be a little real about it. 
So if this one is close, but no cigar, check those links in the video description. There's some other brands that make similar floor plans to this, although I am very sad to report, Keystone has officially retired the Cougar 29 BHS, which was my personal nerve preferred favorite version of this floor plan. But if that thing isn't just close, but it is actually cigar, <laughs> so stupid, give like one of our teams like here in Coldwater a, a call. We'd be more than happy to assist you. And remember, we actually carry Jayco at frankly most of our locations. So, uh, you know, whether, and the other cool thing about that is that let's say you do purchase this from here and you're traveling out west, every Bish's RV location will treat you like home if you have service needs. That's one of the cool things about working with us. So when you're ready, we're ready. And in the meantime, take care, stay safe, have fun, and happy camping, everyone. Mm -hmm.